Thank you so much to MPI, uh, Potomac Chapter, for inviting me to come here and speak to all of you today. I'm really excited. Uh, I spent a good amount of time researching your industry. And a lot of what you're going to learn today is a combination of Web 2.0 strategies being social media combined with where we're at today, which is Web 3. I'm going to talk a little bit about NFTs, the metaverse, and how all of you can be much more effective as you're out promoting your businesses, doing business development, getting clients, promoting events, and so forth. With that being said, once again, my name is Carlos Gill. I'd like to invite you to connect with me on all the social medias. You can find me at carlosgill83 on Twitter, as well as over on Instagram. Also, if you learn something during this session, which I'm absolutely confident that you will, be sure to tweet that out. Tag me at carlosgill83. We also have a hashtag for the conference, which is MPI Reconnect. So make sure that you use that hashtag. Now, let's get started. Welcome to a new normal of marketing. How many of you are attending your first in-person conference since the pandemic started? Well, actually, you know what? That's a, Well, give yourselves a round of applause. That's impressive. I was going to say I'm in a room with a bunch of meeting organizers, so that's probably the wrong place to ask that question. I know I'm excited to be back here because the last two years have been very very tough. I think we can all agree on that. I want to be the first to humbly admit that Zoom meetings suck. Um, they, they just do. They're not personable like meeting here in, in person, no pun intended. But with that being said, the way that we today as professionals, regardless if you're a meeting planner or in my case an author, a speaker, a provider of services, no matter what you do for a living, the way that we market, the way that we do business, that in itself has changed. Now, by a very quick show of hands, does anyone in this room enjoy being sold to? Like, please raise your hand. I want to see your hand. Just raise it real high. I know we have a lot of sales professionals in this room. We have some of the different visitors bureaus in this room. Who enjoys to be sold to? Take a look around. Not a single person, but yet in most of our professional careers, what do we do every single day? We sell. Thank you. We sell, we market, we advertise. But the reality is that pre-pandemic, no one wanted to be sold to. Post-pandemic, people absolutely don't want to be sold to. You know, business, my friends, has always been predicated based on the fact that people do business with who they like, who they trust, who they relate to, who they want to do business with. There's a reason why when we go to these conferences, some of the best relationships happen over what? Food, drinks, wine, cigars, I could go on and on. Some of the best networking that I've done throughout my career that's led to countless business opportunities has happened at conferences just like these. Okay? It's happened at the networking events, at the happy hours. Why? Because those are the moments that you get to build intimate dialogue and intimate relationships with others. And once again, we do business with people that we like, we trust, we relate to. So with that being said, everything that you've learned about internet marketing up to this point, hit the reset button on that. Because the world, as we know it, has changed. Not only are we just coming out of a pandemic, but the world of technology is changing. You look at companies like Facebook, that now know, is known as Meta, which is short for Metaverse. Just yesterday, Elon Musk acquired all of Twitter. Not a fraction of it, not a little bit of it, all of it. So the world is changing. What does that mean as professionals, regardless of the industry that we work in? That means that we ourselves have to change. There's different demographics, such as Gen Z, that are entering the workplace. Gen Zers now are becoming consumers. Millennials, I remember, gosh, I'm. Full disclosure, 38, I remember when I started doing this right around 25, 26. I was really young back then. And back then, all the conferences that you would go to, there was always sessions about how to market to millennials. Well, guess what? Those millennials now are me <laughs> with kids and married and bills and responsibilities. So the way that millennials engage is very different from the way that Gen Zers engage. You know, my oldest kids are 16 and 13, and I see them all day long on their TikTok, on their Snapchat. Okay? The way that their attention span operates is vastly less than millennials whose attention span was already diminished. So I only say this to put into context as you're out doing your jobs, as you're using social media as a place to network and to inevitably sell, you need to realize that there's some new forms of communication, there's some new 
technologies that have entered the marketplace over the last two years. So let's start with blockchain and the metaverse. Who is familiar with the term blockchain? Okay, a couple of you. Guess what, up until a year ago, I didn't know much about blockchain, NFTs, metaverse. So now that I've been a year into actually investing in things like crypto and NFTs and buying digital real estate, I can confidently say on stages like this that blockchain is the future of inevitably everything that we do. And the easiest way to understand what a blockchain is, is it's a peer-to-peer -peer network in which cryptocurrency is the primary form of monetary transaction. Metaverse is very different. A metaverse is a virtual 3D experience where we have avatars. In those metaverses, we're able to transact and buy things like digital real estate, attend events, attend sporting events, work, earn money. So all these cool things that we can do in real life, where technology is going, we'll be able to do all these things, but as cartoon avatars. It's pretty scary, isn't it? And kind of weird when you break it down. So what you're seeing here on the screen is this is the future of event, event planning, event marketing, events in general. It's right here. It's cartoon avatars. We're seeing this happen right now. I see a couple heads nodding like that'll never happen. But guess what? People, or what, in 2022? People 14 years ago, 15 years ago, said that social media would never take off. 10 years ago, I took a job at a company called Winn-Dixie, they're one of the largest supermarket chains in the Southeast. I was their first social media manager. I was told to my face repeatedly by my CMO back then, social media will never work. Guess what? The joke is on them. It worked. But again, what works doesn't always work. It has to evolve. People evolve. You remember CDs back in the day? When you think of the lifeline of a CD, the lifeline of CD was like about 10 years until MP3s came out and disrupted CDs. And where do you see CDs today? They don't exist, right? <laughs> They're very cheap. You know, it's funny because we talk about kids. I was at Barnes & Noble recently with my oldest, 16 and 13 year olds, and they wanted me to buy them albums, records, even though we don't have a record player at home, but they view it to be cool so what's old is now new again, but the cost of a record is about $35 to $50. That's not cool for my pocket when you can download the same music on Apple. My whole point that I'm trying to make here is that we are always evolving as people. And this that you see here on the screen, while it seems very far-fetched, right now you have celebrities like Snoop Dogg that are doing conferences and concerts in the metaverse. You have actual organizations that are doing live events. Now, let's talk about NFTs for a moment. How many of you in this room own an NFT? Rachel owns one. I see another kind of crocodile hand going up. Uh, I see one person back here. All right, so we're in a room with, I would, I would have to guess, based on the demographic that I'm seeing here, we have some pretty high income earning professionals in this room. But yet, besides myself, three-ish other people own NFTs. So let me break down to you, first of all, what an NFT is. Let me show you some use cases about this. What you see here on the screen is my most prized possession that I own. Um, this is called a mutant ape. This right here is a NFT. An NFT is a digital collectible that lives on a blockchain that is backed by cryptocurrency. So I will repeat this again because as you I will speak in English and repeat this. As you go out into the wild and you start hearing about NFTs, whether it's from your kids, your grandkids, other speakers like me, marketers, Gary Vee, whomever, you're going to get very confused because they, they break down NFT as a non-fungible token. I don't know about all of y'all. I've never used the word fungible in my life. I really don't even know still what that word means. So let me make this very clear. An NFT, at the end of the day, is a digital asset. Digital collectible, digital asset. And I'm gonna share some use cases with you here in a moment. But let's go back to what you see here on the screen. So this right here is an NFT that I own. It's called a mutant ape. I bought this NFT six months ago. I was sitting in my barber chair in Jacksonville, Florida, where I live. 
I have my laptop, I'm getting a haircut, and my barber sees like my hands shaking. I was like really nervous buying this digital asset. This right here is the receipt that lives on the, on the blockchain about this asset. If you look at the very bottom of this where it says value, I spent, and I, I promise y'all are gonna think that I'm crazy in a moment, but I, I guarantee you not. I spent 3.9 Ethereum on this NFT that at the time was valued at $11,500. So once again, I'm gonna go back. This picture that you see on the screen, I spent $11,500 for this photo. Would anyone ever buy a JPEG for that much money? <laughs> Probably not. Let's fast forward to today. This NFT, the minimum value that someone would be willing to spend is $121,000. That's a return of $110,000 in six months. Do I have your attention yet? Right? That's a lot of money. I think we can agree on an NFT being a picture of a monkey with slime dripping off its face. But those are the facts. I told you we're living in a new era and the world has changed. So this right here, my friends, is validation of where the world is. Now let me tell you about the business opportunity here. There's money being spent, a lot, a lot of money being spent in this space of Web3. Okay, the business opportunity for you all is first of all, by the year 2024, there's expected to be over 20 billion in revenue spent in the blockchain space. So guess what, we're all early in this. Some of you might be learning about blockchain, metaverse, NFTs, and what's called Web3 for the very first time. And that's cool, I was there a year ago. All of this is very, very new ground level technology. But I'm gonna share with you in a moment how other events are already tapping into, into this technology to monetize. Now, who here is familiar with Nike as a brand? Probably everyone in this room, right, at some point has heard of Nike. Nike just released its NFT sneakers over the weekend. So again, to kind of put in perspective how this whole NFT space works, whether you want to use this in your jobs or you just want to use this as a professional, it's totally up to you. But Nike releases its first NFT over the weekend. I was able, the, the price as of this morning, as you see here on the screen, is 2.39 Ethereum, which comes out to be a little over $7,000. That's an expensive pair of sneakers that you will never touch. You'll never put them on your feet. You will never put them in your closet. They will only live online in a digital wallet. I bought one of these for about two Ethereum over the weekend. I saw the price went up to a little bit over three. I quickly sold, I made about one ETH or Ethereum profit in 48 hours, which came out to be about $3,000 profit. So again, there's money in this. And because there's money in this, brands are entering this space very, very fast. Adidas, on one afternoon, made $20 million in profit from an NFT drop. Adidas bought a Bored Ape, so the same family of collection that I just shared with you that I purchased many moons ago. Adidas bought one of their own, they put some Adidas gear on it, and then that investment that they made, they flipped it into an NFT of their own that they were able to yield $20 million of revenue in just a couple of hours. Fascinating, for me at least. You know, I see we have someone here who's nodding their head kind of confused, I know. There's a lot to take in. Trust me, I, I, I explain this to my clients all day long and they're like in awe about this space. Arizona IC bought a board eight. Visa bought a CryptoPunk for $150,000. But let's talk about events for a moment. Let's talk about the space that you all are in, which is event planning, organizing, selling to event organizers and planners. How many of you are familiar with Gary V? You've heard that name before? Cool, a few of you. So there's an event coming up in just a few weeks called VCon. I'll share with you here in just a moment. Gary Vee will tell you all about his conference. But right now the tickets to this conference are 0.39 Ethereum. Mind you that the price point of these event tickets fluctuates based on supply and demand. So with these NFTs, if there's let's say 10,000 of them that exist on the blockchain, 
and there's only 700 available for sale, as that 700 number becomes smaller, then the price of the NFT is going to naturally go up, which is pretty cool. So even right now, I did a screenshot uh, this morning to drop this in my presentation, but the tickets to this conference might actually fluctuate. They might be more right now. They might be less based on the supply and demand. But this right here, this NFT for VCon is a ticket. Now, when you buy this ticket as an NFT, you have ownership of it. So I would imagine that most of you, if not all of you in this room, purchased a ticket to today's event. Imagine if that ticket that you purchased was an NFT that now you have ownership over. So now the conference that you're here to attend doesn't necessarily control the price of the secondary market of sales, you do. So you could work for a company that's like, we're gonna buy 10 of these tickets, we're gonna buy a table, and we're going to sell them on our own, or we're gonna use these as giveaways. But the fact that you own the NFT, that itself is a contract. Now, with that being said, I'm gonna play this video. It's about a minute, minute and a half long, so you can learn more about how Gary Vee is using NFTs for his conference VCon. This is an unreal level of access to you for people who buy these NFTs. Yeah, I mean, wait till you see what I'm gonna do with the conference. This is gonna be the best conference of all time. Welcome to VCon. VCon is a yearly event that is tied in directly to VFriends, the NFT project that I launched in May of 2021. Every VFriend token is a ticket to, a multi-day event that is gonna rival some of the greatest conferences in the world around entrepreneurship, marketing, ideas, creativity, competition. Tons of jam sessions, all night, marshmallow pits, talking, meeting, surprise and delight. It's a community. You know, I live a career where I've been able to travel the whole world and see all the greatest conferences and that decade of collecting, oh, I like this, oh, I like how they did that, that was epic, and I like how the unconference and the hallways this, and oh, the best part of a conference is who you meet. I'm gonna bring all that. My main plan is to leverage my 25-year career and all the karma and all the relationships and all the business stuff that I've done to bring the world's greatest speakers there, and I also have the privilege of being in the dirt. Right there, Direct, show it. Like the dirt, I like, th I like that shit. I'm from that shit. So I know the kids that are coming up the game right now that are the next people that are gonna matter. And of course I'm gonna have them headline side stages so that you can meet them early and build relationships with them early and do business with them early and have selfies with them early. But I'm also gonna have the biggest names in the world because I'm gonna take the profit from the drop and I'm gonna invest it in throwing the conference that I've always wanted to attend. Be gone. So let's put this in the context in terms of this room here. How many of you represent one of the visitors bureaus in your city? Okay, a lot of you here. Imagine for just a moment, I think, uh, is someone here from St. Petersburg? I saw St. Petersburg is one of the sponsors. Okay, so let's just imagine like, what are, okay, right here. So imagine like St. Petersburg for a moment. You do an NFT and it's like a, a pass. It's a gateway to unlock all the cool things that there are to do in St. Petersburg. But the, f the first thing that you have to do is inevitably, you have to buy the NFT. By buying the NFT, now that's your new membership card that unlocks whether it's experiences, discounts at restaurants, whatever it might be. So as you saw with that example with VCon, what Gary V is using his NFTs for, first of all, is he created a whole collection of NFTs called V Friends, and one of the benefits or perks that you unlock by buying the NFT is a ticket to the conference for the next three years. So for the next three years, you will have a ticket, even if you cannot attend, that you can resell. Again, there's money in that. So start thinking along the lines that this is a technology that you wanna tap into. First of all, once I'm off this stage, I can answer any questions that you guys have about NFTs because I know there's probably a lot that's going through your head. Um, but think about how do you use this technology, A, to engage a younger audience or an audience that might not, being a pay, might not be paying attention right now to what it is that you're doing, and B, how you can use NFTs as a way to modernize your ticketing system as well. Now you see this on the slide that says hype is a new marketing. What does that mean? Buying an NFT, being tapped into this ecosystem today, like I've just shared with you over these examples, gives you access and it gives you reach. Now that's something that might not necessarily be beneficial to you directly in your day-to-day -day job, but for the organization that you represent, for the hotel that you work for, for the city, 
okay, if it's visit, insert city here. Being a part of these communities now expands your reach into a different realm. So as we transition from Web3 over into social media, I want you to do me a favor and just think for a moment what it is that you want to accomplish by using social media. Is it to sell? Is it to advertise? Is it to market? Is it to meet people? Whatever it is, those are your goals. And stick to those goals. So I'm going to share with you a framework here over the next 20 minutes that we have together. And this is centered around the book that I wrote called The End of Marketing a couple of years ago around how you can become what I like to refer to as a marketing savage. How you can become a better marketer when it comes to creating content, how you can become a better marketer when it comes to building community, how you can be much more effective with converting that content, that community over into sales. So first things first, social media is very noisy, my friends, very noisy. Okay, I just spent the last 20 minutes telling you about NFTs and Web3. That's a whole ecosystem, whole community in itself. You have not just Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, Discord. You have a lot of noise that's being created every single second of the day on social media. So naturally, your challenge, whatever your end game and objective is, is how do I sift through all of that noise that's taking place in real time to get my, my customer's attention or get the attention of whether it's other meeting planners or customers that you're trying to reel in. First thing is first, you have to know your audience. This is critical. You don't have to be on every social network because the reality is that you can't be everywhere at once and you can't be great everywhere. And if you try to automate your post to hit every social network, you're gonna come across as robotic. And guess what? People are not gonna to wanna to engage with you or follow you and much less buy from you. So knowing your audience is critical and what that means is having a presence on the social networks where your audience lives. You might not need to be on TikTok. You might not need to be on Snapchat. But a platform like LinkedIn, for those of you in this room, is critical. So I say this because so many times I see that professionals across different verticals and industries, they waste so much time trying to be on all of these mediums. And the reality is that you need to pick the one or two social networks where you can get the biggest reach and the biggest bang for your buck. Now, the reality is you can't use these mediums and post once and walk away. So if you commit to LinkedIn, LinkedIn has to be where you're working the majority of your leads. LinkedIn has to now become your CRM, so to speak. If it's Twitter, it has to be Twitter. You have to go all in. Now, the reality is that people today are brands. People buy from people. I think we can all agree with that. And what you do as a professional is going to be important. How many of you in your day-to-day -day are actually taking a phone and you're going on Instagram and you're making stories with a camera pointed towards yourself. How many of you? I, I, I knew Rachel was gonna raise her hand. I had a feeling that was a given. So besides Rachel, besides myself, besides my buddy Marty that's joining us from Orlando, how many of you are actually creating content around yourself and what you do? A Couple other people, okay. I'm gonna share with you an example in just a moment um, because I think this will resonate with you very differently. When this pandemic started, you see here on the screen, this is my business partner and brother-in-law. So when this pandemic started, both of us lost our jobs, so to speak. I've been doing this now for many years, public speaking, marketing, consulting, et cetera. My business partner and brother-in-law is an ex-professional baseball player. He was running a car dealership. Pandemic happens, it's middle of March, everything's shutting down, we're about to be quarantined, and life sucked at that point. So we get this idea in our head to start up a mask company. And we called it Outlaw Masks. Now, when you're a marketer, like I am, marketing becomes a lot easier. So when you start up a business, you start thinking through, how can I get the biggest return on my investment of time or marketing spend dollars? And for us, it became TikTok. So essentially what we did was we went to every Walmart that we could in Jacksonville, Florida, where we live, and we would use Walmart employees as the models for our masks. Now, it's very simple. We would create this content for free. A lot of these videos would go viral because again, we're in the middle of a pandemic. People are at home, they're watching their phones a lot. Who doesn't like feel good content? We're using like sappy music. If you've ever seen those like uh, late night commercials for I, I wanna say it's like the dog rescue 
organization with like the Sarah McLaughlin music. We're using that kind of effect in our videos. But very quickly, we grew a brand from being a startup, zero dollars in revenue, zero marketing budget, to over 300,000 followers on TikTok. Again, my good friend Marty from Orlando, Wave Marty, he helped us with all of our Facebook ads. We were essentially creating these viral videos that people were then going to our website. They would go to our website. We had these tracking pixels on the website. So if you didn't buy from us on the first time you visited our website, we were going to essentially annoy the shit out of you over on Twitter and Instagram until you converted and bought a mask. So we generated well over six figures in revenue in a matter of six months, which was great. Um, but some other cool things happened. And I'm gonna share with you here a video in a moment of Super Bowl Sunday. So take a look. Kansas City! Bang, bang, bang! Okay, you ready? Phone right now. The Chiefs You're are ready? wearing our mask. No. The Chiefs Three, have our mask on. Two, check your phone right one, now. One, go! Right Welcome now. to the... Ah! So that right there is an example that brings me to the point that not only do people like to do business with who they trust, who they want to root for, but at the same time, the secret today to building a successful brand is A, you need to be the face of your company. Not a logo, not everyone's Nike, not everyone's Adidas, not everyone is Google or Twitter, but you have to be the faces of your brands. If you want to get more bookings for conferences, guess what? When you have a conference at your hotel, bring your followers, even if it's 20 people digitally, along for the ride. Show them what's happening. Get used to talking on your phone. Hey, today we've got X client that's at my property, or I'm doing X. Let me show you guys. Let me take you for a tour of what's going on. It's that sort of content that you need to post to real people in. Just posting a, a static image of a group of people isn't going to move the needle, not in today's generation, not in today's market of doing business. So none of this is new, just FYI. Throughout the years, you've had motivational speakers like Tony Robbins, Eric Thomas, Les Brown. You've had business personalities, your Gary Vee's, your Ty Lopez, your Mel Robbins of the world. You have influencers. All of these people, okay, are brands. They're all selling to you when you look at their content. So your objective should be, how do I do what they do, but with appeal to who I'm trying to reach? Because the reality, friends, is that we all have access to the same tools. When people say to me, oh, I, I can't do what Beyonce does because I'm not Beyonce, I call bullshit. You have access to the same tools that Beyonce has access to. You and I have access to the same social networks. It's called applying your time wisely and effectively to build rapport, build connections, and through those connections, you share content. So when this event here today is over and we all go have wine and drinks at six o'clock, make it a priority to connect with everyone at this conference or as many people as you can on LinkedIn and also on Instagram. In fact, when I get off this stage, all of you at your tables, please connect with each other on LinkedIn and on Instagram. When people walk up to me at a conference and they ask me for a business card, you know what I come back with? I tell them, are you on Instagram? Or ask them, are you on Instagram? Why? Because Instagram is the new business card. First of all, I don't own business cards, okay? <laughs> I like you. <laughs> I don't own any business cards. You know what happens to business cards? And I don't want anyone in this room to give me their business card either. What happens is these business cards go in my backpack. Actually, they go in my pockets. And when I get to my room at the end of the night, I empty my pockets. They go on a, they go like on the nightstand and then they go in my backpack and I never touch your business card again. Connect with people. Make that human connection where someone's going to remember you. Connect on Instagram. On Instagram now you can see if you have things in common. You can see if that person has kids, you have kids, sports, you like sports, political views, whatever it is, 
you can now connect on a much more personable manner than a piece of paper. So let's decode social media. You've got content, community, consistency, and conversion. Content is what people see. It's what they feel. Again, if you want to sell people on the idea of bringing a conference to St. Petersburg, you need to showcase what there is to do in St. Petersburg. If you, want to show, if you want people to do their conference at your hotel, you need to showcase what happens at your hotel. For example, we are at a very nice hotel. I travel a lot, so kudos to you guys. I really like this property, okay? Showcase more of the experience and less about the product. People today, all of us, I should say, not just people, all of us in this room, we're living this Tinder generation where content looks good or it looks bad and people react based on what looks good or looks bad. So for those of you that aren't familiar with how online dating works today, let me share with you that there's this app called Tinder that people go on and literally they see a photo and they just swipe. If someone looks cute, they swipe one direction. If they don't look cute, they go in another direction. It's very basic. Social media is the same. You know why? Because we're just doing this. We're swiping up and down, up and down, up and down. Oh, this post got a lot of engagement. Let me take a look. Let me, let me heart it. Let me like it. Oh, this appeals to me. It's funny. Let me like it. Let me share it on DM with a friend. Oh, this brand's selling something to me that I don't need. Let me keep swiping. Oh, this is on sale at my favorite store. Let me keep swiping. Think about your own behaviors. When was the last time that you saw an ad on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and you sent a message with enthusiasm to a friend saying, hey, look at what this brand has on sale? Probably hasn't happened yet. But I would imagine for those of you that are active on social media, when you see something funny, you see Will Smith slapping Chris Rock, okay? You see what's happening in your timeline. Those are conversations that you slow down and you pay attention to. So speaking of Will Smith, um, and it's just ironic that that just happened, and I have had this slide in my presentation for a while, what purpose does your content serve? So I think a lot of professionals think that marketing in itself is a game of just being loud and being noisy. And at some point in time, some marketing guru said that content was king, and that's BS. Content is the first step of getting people into your sales funnel. I guarantee you that if you start posting content of conferences that are jumping, where people are having a good time, where people look like they really want to be there, you will start attracting more meeting planners that are going to think, wow, maybe I should do my conference at this hotel because the people that go there look like they're having a good time and there's a nice pool and the rooms look nice and the bar looks nice. So put yourself in the mindset of who you're trying to sell to. As a brand yourself, you really have three options. It's to educate, inspire, or entertain. So educate whoever's paying attention to your content. Again, if it's 20 people or 200 or 2,000, educate them on what it is that you do. Educate them on your product. Educate them on the access, the experience, the lifestyle. Inspire. Inspire them to want to come visit you. Entertain them. Show the fun that happens at the events that are taking place at the hotels that you represent. So try this. When you go back to your offices, start by creating an inventory of content assets. So this is very simple. Go to your company's website. Go to your company's social media channels. Look at all the different assets that already exist that now you can share on your own social channels. Or when you get approached by a potential lead or a client, or when you meet other people at this conference and they wanna learn more about you or more about the property or the destination that you represent, you actually have an inventory of assets that you're able to deploy to them. Now let's keep in mind that community is king. So normally when I do these talks, I'm speaking more so to corporate marketers that represent typically consumer brands. So community is critical for them because Inevitably, if you don't have a community, you're just talking to air. But the same principles hold true in B2B. And what I mean by this is that you need to start building a community of your own. Unless you do social media for your employer, 
You yourself are a brand. So it's up to you to do social media for yourself and start building a community for yourself. Now, fans being customers, they can typically make or break your brand on social media. So it's really important that when you have events taking place at your hotels, even if it's not your event that you're producing, but you are you know, the sales rep that sold the space, or you are a vendor at that event like the company that's recording this right now, it's very important that you pay attention to what's being said in real time on social media. So you look at an example like Delta, Drew Gooden tweets out, excuse me Delta, but this is outrageous. I just got sucked through the toilet hole in one of your aircrafts, I'm now hurtling through the sky, can I get my money back? This never happens in Southwest. <laughs> now, we all know that this is BS. This didn't really happen, but the tweet really did happen. So how does Delta respond to this? Instead of having fun, they decide to tweet back, hello, Drew, I'm sorry to learn of this. Can you provide more detail to what occurred? This is a really bad example of social media community management. Imagine someone comes to this hotel or comes to this event and they tweet something kind of silly and hokey like this and the standard response is like, we're so sorry that you had a bad time. No, have fun. This is social media, the key word is social. So here's a tip for you, don't act like a brand on social media, act like a person. Say the things, do the things that people say. I get that everyone sitting here today is representing their professional avatar, but when you clock out at six o'clock, you're a regular person. You are a person. There's really no difference between professional and personal. It's you. You are the brand of you. So what I mean by that and how this is gonna help you going forward is post more content that's related to who you are as a professional. Now, let me share some engagement strategies with you that I believe you're gonna find very helpful in your profession here today. Start thinking about social networks as search engines. So whether it's Twitter, whether it's Instagram, LinkedIn even, these are search engines. You can go right now, and if you knew the hashtag for any conference in the world that's happening right now, you can be a part of that conference. Recently, I didn't go to South by Southwest, but I followed the hashtag on Instagram and Twitter, I felt like I was there, right in my living room. I didn't go to Coachella recently, but I was technically at Coachella in a digital version, in the metaverse. So you right now have access to unlimited prospects, unlimited opportunities to connect with people. I ran a quick search this morning for my room for hashtag meeting planner on Instagram. There's over 131,000 posts lifetime for meeting planner on Instagram. These are people that either are colleagues of yours or these might be individuals that work at organizations that are looking for their next venue to host their event. Your challenge is how do I get my content into these feeds and how do I connect with more people that are posting this type of content? And that is where I say you need to use these social networks as search engines. This right here is for the visitors bureaus. If you just go in Instagram and you type in hashtag things to do in, so you got hashtag things to do in Atlanta, LA, London, Houston, New York, you will now see there's a combination of restaurants posting content, people posting content. If you aren't posting content about the city that you are representing, that you want more people to visit, then you are missing out on a ginormous opportunity. So going forward, as you're out and about at that hot restaurant, that nightclub, that chamber of commerce event, whatever it is, that conference is taking place in your city, make sure that you're posting content and you're tagging it. Hashtag things to do in whatever city it is that you live in. Now, let's talk about using LinkedIn as a lead generation B2B tool. How many of you here in this room are in the business of attracting events to your hotel or venue or facility? Several of you, many of you in this room, cool. If you go right now on LinkedIn and you type in event planner, so event planner as a, jo as a job title, you have over 105,000 event planners in the United States. There is no shortage of opportunity for any of you. You just have to use LinkedIn as a search engine to reverse engineer and search for people with event planner as a job description. If you wanna go into meeting planner to book more meetings, you have 23,000. But here's where it gets really, really exciting. 
So I am a speaker, right? I generate revenue based off of speaking to groups and also advising and consulting typically to the people that sit in those seats at those groups. So as a speaker, my objective, very similar to all of y'all, is to connect with the people that are the decision makers that are booking speakers. So how do I find those individuals that book speakers? I go to LinkedIn, I type in conference producer. So for those of you that are selling AV services, venues, food, whatever it is, this is 1,000% applicable to you. Type in conference producer in LinkedIn. In this case, you have 8,400 results. Think of those as 8,400 leads. There's an abundance of people sitting out there that you can sell to. So I ran the search, and what really stood out to me, actually, I'm going to go one step further. I ran the search, and then I ran a separate search for Microsoft events. So this is where I get really excited. Microsoft produces conferences all over the world. Microsoft is always looking for speakers. They're always looking for venues. They're always looking for service providers. I got really excited when I ran the search, and the first search result that came up, you see here at the top, is Kendall McElliott. She's her director of events. On the same page of search results, you see towards the bottom, Joanna. Joanna is the CMO of global events. So pay attention now, because I'm going to share with you, like to AT, how you can use this to sell. So again, you have conference producer searches, or you can just type in the name of a large company that you want to attract to your venue or your facility, type in that company in the search result and add the word events. And you will see a list of the people that produce events for those companies. So we got two people here. We got the director of events, we have the CMO of global events. Let's first go to the top, right? I always like to go to, the, to what I call the eagle. So you go to the eagle, which is Joanna, she's the CMO of global events. Joanna, like most CMOs, doesn't post often on her social media. I clicked on contact info. She doesn't have her email address. She doesn't have her Twitter account. Joanna's making it very difficult for me as a speaker or service provider to be able to get in touch with her. Kendall, on the other hand, the director of events, when you click on contact info, that blue link, she has her Twitter account. Ah, this is easy. I'm now going to be able to send her a tweet, or follow her, or direct message her, until I go to her Twitter account. And I see that Kendall hasn't tweeted since 2020. Kendall's very passionate when it comes to politics, which is typically something that I professionally steer away from having conversations. So let's go back over to LinkedIn. I look at Kendall's posts, and I see her feed. And I see that Kendall, one month ago, posted that she is excited to be back on the road and she just attended her first event in nearly two years. Kendall also tagged the hashtag to the conference that she was at. So now she just made my job easier because I can see every single person when I click on that hashtag, I can see every single person that posted content at that conference. Those are all leads, ladies and gentlemen. And now I can also click on every single person that she just tagged in this post. Now, meeting planners, who do you usually hang out with at conferences? Like this, you hang out with other meeting planners. You hang out with people on your team. So as a speaker who's looking to speak at more meetings, I'm gonna go and click on every one of these people's profiles and invite every single one of them to connect. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm also gonna look at the content that they're posting and I'm going to comment selectively. So a post like this, I personally would say, Welcome back to reality, Kendall. Love it. I'm also on the road. I'm speaking at conferences once again. Hey, I just sent you a connection request. Let's stay in touch. That is the first step of the sales process, which is getting on someone's radar. So this is a process that if you apply this methodology to a T over and over again, I guarantee you, you will be busier than you know what busy is. So as we look to wrap up, social media is the wild, wild west. There are no rules in this space. There's no governing body that says that you can't engage this meeting planner or conference producer at this organization because they did their conference last year at a competing resort or property or city. There's no rules. In fact, 
Most of the brands that are winning in this space of social media are winning because they've adapted and they've developed a personality. You look at a brand like Wendy's, they are what I call savage marketers. Chick-fil-A, as we know, is closed on Sundays. They tweet out, is there anything better than enjoying one of our spicy chicken sandwiches on Friday? Wendy's tweets out, yes, enjoying one of ours on a Sunday. Again, no rules, but you have personality if you want people to engage. And you have to focus on moments, not marketing. How many of you have ever participated in an online challenge? Whether it's the Ice Bucket Challenge, the Shiggy Challenge, the Face App Challenge. There's always all these challenges that are taking place. Again, social network is like the greatest gift that we could all have. Not only does it give you access to people, it gives you access to entertainment. These are opportunities for you to swoop in, for you to showcase the human side of your brand. Now, I know that my time is up, and I got a couple more slides. And then I think we got a couple questions. No time for questions? So, a couple things. One, if you enjoyed this presentation, I want to encourage you to go to Amazon, get my book, The End of Marketing. Um, if you need any help whatsoever when it comes to NFTs, social media, I would love to work with you along with my business partner on getting you set up. And once again, uh, I am a speaker. Uh, as you can see me up here, I have a passion and enthusiasm for public speaking. So if I can bring any value to you or your clients, please feel free to connect with me at the happy hour. Now, one more slide, and I promise the show will continue. It'll be okay. How many of you here are familiar with DJ Khaled? Wow. Wait, hold up, hold up. Y'all don't know about NFTs, but you know who DJ Khaled is? <laughs> you just really impressed, the sh impressed me. Of what? Oh, okay. I like that. I like that. Touche. <laughs> DJ Khaled is a master marketer. I'm going to start asking that question differently for next time. Um, DJ Khaled is a master marketer. Okay? DJ Khaled is not the most eloquent, least spoken influencers or personalities on the internet. He's not the best looking. But DJ Khaled has something that more people wish that they had, and that is reach and views. In fact, more people watch DJ Khaled on social media than they watch the Kardashians, if you can believe that, because he has mass appeal. He appeals to males, females, different demographics. So DJ Khaled has this saying called keys to success. So as a true hip hop head and marketer, I went back and started thinking, how can I present to my audiences that I speak to what the keys to success of social media marketing are today? And the first is perhaps the most important. That's why are you on social media? Social media can be a complete waste of time if you're not strategic, if you're only using these mediums to sell. Which brings me to my next point, which is don't think like a marketer. Always think like a customer. Always think like a fan. If you are always in marketer mode, sales mode, meeting planner mode, people will sniff through that and they will not want to follow you or connect with you, I guarantee you. Three is who are you trying to reach? The reality is that you cannot appeal to everyone out there. Trust me, I, I, I do this all day long. You cannot appeal to every single person on social media. It's impossible. Four, social media never sleeps, which is why it's really important that you are constantly checking your direct messages, you're checking your app mentions, you have staff on board, you're leveraging your resources to make sure, especially at conferences, Trust me, I know as a speaker, I go to a lot of these things. There's always things happening after hours. Um, I had a flight that was delayed just so you know getting in here. So I was actually hitting up the organizers of this conference at like midnight in LA that I needed new ground transportation to get here. And, and someone from the team here emailed me almost like right away. So that's why I say social media never sleeps. Business definitely never sleeps. Create relevant content. So if you are trying to engage more people that are in the business of doing meetings, great. Post more content about meetings, but showcase the fun aspect of it. Six, be loyal to your audience. And what I mean by this is people are commenting on your content, comment back, tweet back, don't ignore them, especially with your clients. If you really wanna win clients over, share their content. Make them look like rock stars. Everything comes down to community, my friends. Community is really what is king in this kingdom of Web3 and Web2 marketing. It's, it's not content. Content is only what you see at the very top level. But community really reigns supreme overall. So thank you so much for your time. MPI, you've been great. I'll be in the back of the room. Take care.